Hello and welcome to the first Excel lecture. Uh, this lecture will cover just a basic introduction to Excel, learning how to edit it, the program, and format spreadsheets. Um, that's what we'll be covering today. Uh, this class is unique in that we will be uh, doing a what we call a flipped class. What that means is you will be watching these lectures before uh, class time itself and you must watch these uh, videos before class. Uh, and it is very important that you do so. Because what we will be doing in class itself will be doing some practice problems so you'll have time with me there to be able to help you uh, learn Excel uh, much better. So we're taking this lecture portion out of that um, and you consider this your reading time for the class, preparing for the class itself. Um, and I will run through examples in each of these uh, videos also. Sometimes there'll be one or two videos uh, for each class period. Um, and if we're lucky, sometimes we may have time uh, in class to uh, do some homework also. Okay, so the question is, why do we learn Excel, right? What, what is the reason for uh, learning Excel? Uh, it is a tool that engineers use, but it's also a tool that can be used uh, for other reasons. Could be for personal reasons, for doing your own personal finances, creating a budget, uh, things like that. Um, it also is a great tool to learn uh, because it starts the process of thinking critically and being able to learn a few things on your own. So during this semester, I will have you try and learn a few things on your own without my help. Uh, those types of things are typically extra credit type problems. Uh, also, Excel, essentially love it or hate it, we need it. We actually do use it quite often, uh, whether it is in um, uh, engineering or in chemistry or in many other areas. So it is a good program to learn. Uh, one last thing before we get really get started is that you must use Microsoft Excel. There is many open uh, sourced spreadsheet type programs out there, um, but I require that you use Microsoft Excel. Um, there is Microsoft Excel on many computers or actually all the computers within the campus, so you do have free access to using Microsoft Excel. Uh, you also have Microsoft 365. Uh, one caution with that is Microsoft 365 doesn't have all of uh, the functions that the other uh, Excel programs do, Microsoft Excel programs do on campus, or if you have your own other version of Microsoft Excel. Okay, let's get started a little bit. Um, the first part is really how many of you really know Excel, and when I mean know Excel, it's to use it for more than just a building a table, right? We can build a table like this in Excel real easily with a bunch of numbers. Maybe we had it with a few things, uh, stuff like that. Um, but we really want to know, I really want you to know if, know if you are actually using Excel for more than that. And one of the powers of Excel, and we'll learn this more coming up in future lectures, is being able to write formulas. So here's a formula in Excel. Uh, this formula essentially tells us the cell that we're looking at. So here A1, if we look at A1, there is a three. So this three is in A1. And if we look at B2, it's multiplied times B2. And B2, if we go over to B2, right here, we get seven, so three times seven. And then we're going to add uh, A3, our column A and row three is eight and divide it by B1 is four, right? This is some formula, don't really know what it means, doesn't matter at this point. But this is what it's doing, that's what this formula looks like. And you don't have to know that right now, we'll spend a whole lecture just on formulas itself. But what this program will do then is I can multiply this three times seven plus eight divided by four. And that gives us a total of 23. Looks simple, you know I could just write this all out and write 23. The beauty of Excel is being able to have this table and being able to change this three to a, a five or something else and it will go through and recalculate uh, our value and our answer in here. 
So it's a real powerful program for us to use. So we want to be able to learn how to use it at this level, and we will do that coming up in the future lectures. But right now, let's just get really into the basics of it and learning how uh, the parts of the Excel uh, itself, the worksheet and the workbook, what are those two things, right? And how does it all work? Um, so if we look at it, we have something called a workbook. A workbook is the whole file that you will be creating. And the workbook is really comprised of more than 64,000 worksheets. Each, each sheet, if we look at a spreadsheet real quickly, here's a spreadsheet. If we look at it down on the bottom, we see this word sheet. That is one sheet or a worksheet. This whole file itself is a workbook. If I open up this version of uh, Microsoft Excel, it only shows me one sheet. I can always add additional sheets if I want, right? Here's sheet two. Some versions that you may be using come up with three sheets right away to begin with. So this is our uh, worksheet itself. So with Excel, we can have more than 64,000 of those tabs or worksheets. Uh, by default, a new workbook contains three worksheets. Uh, one if you're using Office 365 or the version that I'm using. So it just depends which one you're using. Um, if we look in the workbook itself at, at the overall uh, or on the worksheet, we can see that we can have over one million rows in a worksheet, one single worksheet. And if we look at the columns, I can have over 16,000 columns on a worksheet. This gives me for the total workbook or my total file, one trillion cells of information. Trust me, I've never come anywhere near that, but I'm telling you, you have the ability to do a ton. Uh, if you're using that much though, the program will slow down and get a little slow for you. So let's look at the parts of the workbook and worksheet. So again, you can see here, we are calling out this whole file itself. This whole file is a workbook, okay? And down below these sheets, each one of those is a separate worksheet, okay? So you can look at the tabs, click on each of those tabs, and that is a worksheet. Let's look at the other parts of the uh, Excel file itself or the Excel screen. We have the one side, the left side that has our numbered rows, and then we have lettered columns on top. You will see in this area here, it says A1. A1 means that I am located in this cell A1. So column A, row one. On top, we have a ribbon, so Microsoft has standardized on this type of thing where they have a ribbon. And in the ribbon, we have different tabs. Um, we'll look at the ribbon itself individually. So in the ribbon, we have different tabs. So we're at the home tab right now. Uh, but if I clicked on one of these other ones, each of those are a tab. So there's an insert tab, a page layout tab, formulas tab. We will spend most of our time in the home tab we may do some work in the insert tab. We may do some later on with the formula tab and data tab. Uh, the page layout, not as much, and the other ones, probably not. And we also use our basic file area, right? That one we'll also use, okay? So on the top of the uh, workbook, you will see this word book number one. Once I change my name of my file, that name will change to the file name, okay? So right now the default is book one. So if I save this spreadsheet uh, or workbook, it would save it as book one. Typically we name it as homework one or homework two or whatever we might wanna call it. Excel has this little uh, circle area with the question mark, that is the help. I highly recommend using help. Help in Excel is actually very good. Most so software programs are not very good with help, but Excel is really good. It gives examples on how to use the, the functions themselves um, and uh, how, what the functions stand for and what it will calculate and things like that. Help is very useful in Excel. 
Also, we have, have in here on the ribbon itself different ribbon icons. So each one of these is an icon, and you've seen some of these before, uh, like with justification. Here's the justification for right justification, center or left justification. Here's top, middle, or bottom within the cell. Some of these are very similar, bold, italics, and things like that to Microsoft Word. Each one of those icons, though, is called a ribbon icon. Okay, so here we go again. We're back to our Excel application window, our whole workbook. Uh, we're in cell A1 at this point. Okay, if I do a right click uh, with my mouse, I will pull up a, another window, uh, and in there we have a lot of things which were very um, common for us, like our cut, copy, paste. Uh, we are able to do insert, delete, clear, filters. We also get this section up here with all the formatting uh, that we will need. Okay, And that's also duplicated from this area here. But sometimes some people like to use that uh, type of uh, situation. So all it is is a right click. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so if I just click anywhere in uh, the spreadsheet and if I do a right click, you will see this one comes up with a few different uh, options for us. Uh, but essentially, you get this other window that allows us to make some selections. These selections also can be found up on the ribbon above, too. OK, let's go on. Uh, Excel has uh, different components we're talking about. One is the clipboard itself. The clipboard, really, all you need to think about on that is just an area where uh, there's some memory, and if we do some copying, all that data or information goes into the memory. It's called the clipboard, and we can then copy and paste it to different locations. Um, there's also a section on Excel which has what we call the formula bar. This is our formula bar in here where we can write our formulas, right? And there's this F of X function symbol. We'll talk about that later, but that's where we'll see things when we type it in. So let's take a look. So you'll see as I go into this uh, cell F2 and I just start typing 123, it is also up in this function area up here. So you'll see it there. I could just as easily have typed up there also like 213 and it will put it in the cell that I'm selecting. This green box tells us what selection we're in. Or this, sometimes it's black. It's some bolded color around the box. Okay, so we see, like I just mentioned, the active cell of the cell that we're working in has that box around it. This one's showing as black. The one that I showed you in the program that I was using was a dark green. Uh, that's how you know what cell you're in. There are different types of data that we can put into Excel uh, that we'll be talking about. One of them is just plain text. Uh, we can just type in our name or other names of capitals or cities or whatever we want to uh, put in there, headings and that type of thing can all be done as text. The other is, is our numbers or values. So that was like the 123 that I typed in or 213 or 215, whatever value I want to put in there. And last is formulas. That was, you know, this equals a three times B two type situation or whatever formula I want to create. And it could also comprise of functions. And we'll talk about those later in the semester. Okay, but it can essentially consist of these three things. Other things we can do is we can delete or erase information within our um, spreadsheet. So I'm just going to talk about these few just a little bit. One is to delete, and that will just erase a cell's content. Um, it will not change any um, formatting that I may have put in it. Uh, it just deletes whatever content has been put into that uh, cell, and I could do it as one cell or a group of cells. There's also a clear button, and the clear button gives us a number of different options where we can delete just the data, just like a delete button, 
or we can clear it completely of all formatting or anything else or comments that we may have put with it. Remember in here in Excel, we also are equipped with an undo and redo command up here. Um, you'll see up there these arrows that go back and forth. forth. I also use the control um, Z function for undo. So it's control Z for undo uh, is the one I do. I don't usually redo things. I think that's control Y. So let's take a look at that real quickly. So here I am back in Excel. Uh, let's take a look at this number one, two, three, and I'm going to just highlight it with my little paint pail, right? And if I go up there and I delete it, I'm just pushing the delete key, you will see that it goes away, but that color still stays there. I'm going to use Control Z, uh, or I could use this back arrow and that brings it back for me, uh, right? I could use that. Um, I could also use the delete cell right there and ask me to shift up or over and it shifted it that completely uh, took care of that cell and made it go away um, so that's one way of doing it. I can also right click and select the delete there and ask me to shift up or down right the other is, is I mentioned that I could do clear if I go over here and I do clear I can clear all leaves the cells all where they were, took out all my formatting. Again, I'm just using Control Z to undo that. I could also use clear formats that took away the yellow. I could also do clear contents. That's the same as just using the delete key. All right. Those are the main ones. There are no comments in this one or hyperlinks. We can do those later or sometime if we want. So that's how the clear and delete work. So how do we start a new uh, Excel workbook? Excel is already designed with some pre-set up templates that you can use um, and they're straightforward pretty much doing it. But we're for the most part going to create our own workbook. Uh, and in doing so, what we do is we can access a blank workbook uh, by going into the new icon uh, and accessing the toolbar under file and we can do file, new, and choose our um, new file and what it will look like. So let's take a look at that. Here I am in Excel. If I go under file, so I'm going to click file, and it says new. And you'll see new, there are many different tables that exist here. I'm just going to do a blank work, work right? And here is my blank one. Okay. That's my blank work. And you'll see up here it says book two. Before I had one that was open, that one was book one. Okay. Saving a, um, a workbook in Excel is the same as saving in Word. You would click on File, Save, um, and I would recommend using Control S very often. Control S uh, helps you in case you forget to save something, uh, it, it's a real easy way to do that. So save often, okay? Uh, you can also do a save as if you want to rename your worksheet as something different and now you have two that are similar, uh, you can do something like that. And of course you can use the drop down box to change drive. This is all very similar to Word and many other programs that exist. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. But the biggest thing is when Excel freezes and you haven't saved for an hour, you're going to get a look like this, right? Uh, what have I done? So please save your work uh, books often. And you can just do that simply by doing Control S or going under File and Save. Okay, let's uh, look at creating a worksheet. And we did that by just um, hitting that plus down below and we added a new worksheet. So let's look at that. If I go down below, I have sheet one. I hit the plus. I now have sheet two. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I have sheet two. In Excel, we can also do something and use something called ranges, and ranges allows us to copy or move 
uh, sections at one time as opposed to just one cell. We can also format them all at once if we want. Um, so anything that we do to that range, we will do to all of the cells, and that's including formatting, copying, or whatever. The key thing to all of this is to realize a range consists of the upper left corner. This is in this example C2, this cell C2 right here is the upper uh, left corner and then the bottom right corner is the um, D5. This whole blue box that's shown here is the range. So this is a function we'll learn about later. It's called sum. It's just going to add up everything in those uh, in that blue box. It's not going to add just C2 and D5. It's everything in those two columns from C2, C3, C4, C5, D2, 3, 4, and 5. It will add all of those. And I will tell you this will be on an exam and people will get that wrong. So you need to understand what that uh, range means. And it's defined by the upper left corner, followed by a colon, down to the lower right corner. Okay. So let's take a look at that real quickly. Here we are. I'm going to, sorry about that. I am going to enter some data. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's put in some text. Uh, all right. I can do my range. I can highlight all that range. I can dump my pail with some color if I want, and I have that range taken care of. Okay, we'll come back to this more. So that gives us an idea of what I can do in that area. Uh, in Excel, I can add rows and columns, uh, individual cells. Um, I can do, and it will tell me to insert them above or below. So if I'm here and I want to insert a cell, I can go here and I can go uh, insert cell and I can say shift cells down and you'll see that it shifted those down. Um, I'll do control Z. Maybe I want to do a row, insert a row and it inserted that row down. Uh, I can do a column, insert column and it inserted that column before, okay? So it just depends. And you can always play around, and if you don't like the results, Control Z is great, or that arrow up above is always a wonderful thing. There's a couple methods for moving data around. Um, so this is actually not copying, but it's actually moving the information. One is to drag and drop, and I'll look at that procedure in just a second, and the other is to use your clipboard, the data part, and using Control X. I like to use Control X and Control V. Control X is to cut your work, and then Control V is to copy. And then V again, this is paste, the pay area we're going to paste it. I'm going to show you also a way that we can uh, uh, copy cells. So instead of uh, doing a paste, uh, cut and paste, we can also copy. So if we just do Control C, C standing for copy, we can do that also. And we could also drag and drop, and we do that by holding this Control key down at the same time, and it will copy it, and I will show you how to do that. Okay, let's look at how we do that. Let's come back to this, and then there's this autofill, and I will show you that. This black bottom square on the bottom is called a handle and that we can use to drag around. We'll take a look at that. So we're gonna look at all those things. So here we are with our spreadsheet. Uh, the first thing was moving, right? I can uh, highlight these two cells. I'm just holding, I clicked in this cell B2 and I'm holding my uh, left mouse button down and highlighting those two cells. I can do again this control uh, X if I want. That means I'm cutting it. 
and I can paste it over here. Control uh, V is pasting and you'll see it moved it. I'm going to undo it. The other way is to, if I highlight those, I can move my cursor until you see these uh, four arrows and if I do that I can just drag it wherever I want and it will move it also. So that's the drag and drop method. The other is you can also go up here and do cut, click cut, and you can do paste and it will paste it. So there's many ways, right? I can also highlight, cut, and I can paste or whatever over here. So there's many ways of doing that same thing. I can do this with copy also. So if I highlight all three, I can do control C and then place it over here, control V, control V, wherever I want, right? And it will copy it. Or I can hold my control key down and you'll see if I let go, oops, if I let go with it, you see this, this first you get the four arrows and if I hold the control key down, I get this little plus next to my pointer, I can now move that where I want and it copies it that way also. So that's another way. I can also use the copy up here and paste. I can right click, uh, copy and paste. All those are different ways of copying and pasting. One of the other features we want to talk about in filling in something is to do something with this autofill. So if I have one, two written here, uh, I can fill in a number of values down below. And you'll see down below it's changing the number seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. It will autofill those knowing that I want a consecutive number. Let's just say I started with four and that's all I want. Oop, I don't want green. Let's un let's clear our format for that. I have four. Now let's say I want four, five, six, seven, right? I can go all the way down. I put in all fours. That is not what I wanted, right? So if I do five though, it's telling me it knows that it wants this sequence. And for some reason it wants to do all of this filling. So now if I highlight those and drag it down, you see it will continue to count from there up. So that is something you can use as far as autofill. Okay. Excel also has the ability to do two types of copies. Uh, one of them is a relative copy, and that's what we just did. Uh, the relative copy just refers something back to a specific location. Uh, it does not uh, keep a, a specific location in mind. And I'll give an example of what that means. Uh, we can override that by doing something called an absolute cell, and I will show you how to do that. That is with a plus sign in front of the column and the row, or not a plus, a dollar sign in front of the column and the row. Okay, we talked about clear and delete already. Uh, one thing else you might see is column width needs to be adjusted. Sometimes you will get this area where you have uh, all these um, hashtags uh, put in. Uh, those don't mean that something is wrong, that your, set, your formula didn't work or whatever. It just means that it's not fitting it's, and it's not fitting in the space that we need. All right, we'll look at that real quickly and then we'll come back to the absolute and relative copy. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to enter a very large number. You see it goes over the top of the other column. If I hit enter, it's actually going into scientific notation. If I make this column smaller though, you'll see it brings in these uh, hashtags. That means that that column is too narrow for the values, but the value is still there. If I stretch it out manually by going up with the arrow or the cursor up above and getting the two arrows side by side, I can manually adjust that column. One thing I can also do is if I double click on it, it will automatically go to the width that's needed. Sometimes you may want that, sometimes you may not. You can also adjust your row height. I will show you that in a minute. And we can look at hiding and unhiding columns, okay? So let's take a look at that. So let's say I want to make a very tall row. You'll see again, I've got these arrows on my cursor going up and down. If I just drag it, I've made this very tall column. So now I can adjust maybe these to be in the center if I want or whatever. 
Um, so if I want a different height of a column, I can, or a row, I can do that, just like I can adjust my width of my column, okay? The other thing I can do is hide a column or a row, and by doing that, I can select, let's say I want to hide, uh, maybe just this one, I can select these two. I can highlight them by just holding down the right uh, key on my mouse, and I can do a right click and you will see uh, row height. I can change the height of it if I want, or I can hide these. So you'll see that it's gone. I did not delete them. You'll see the row names are one and then four. It misses two and three. Those are still in there. If I highlight these two here, I can unhide and they come back. Same with a column, right? I can highlight these two columns or even just one column if I want. Let's just do one. If I do that, I can do hide and it goes away. You see it's missing the letter E for that column. I can always bring it back. And there's times you may want to do that, maybe to make your spreadsheet look a little better. Okay, um, some other things are, again, uh, formatting the cells themselves. Uh, you can select the type of cell you want. It could be a number, it could be the alignment, the font, the uh, border, the fill, the protection, all of those are different things you can do. Uh, for the number, there's different types of numbers that you can have from general to specific currency, accounting type currency, percentages, times, dates, R, or text, all sorts of things you can have. Uh, we can change the fonts very easily uh, with the right click or we can use it from the home tab uh, on the ribbon. Uh, you can change the font, the font size, style, all those types of things, very similar to Word. Uh, you can do the formatting of numbers and dates uh, like I had showed on the previous slides. And we looked at already the alignment of the cells, right? The alignment of where that value can be within the cell. Okay. And Excel really automatically does a right uh, align for numbers, uh, including dates, and it does a left align for text. And maybe you don't want it that way. Maybe you want the numbers to be left aligned. You can change that uh, by using that. Let's look at that real quickly so you can see that. So here I have uh, this number three. I can change the alignment to uh, be left aligned, right? Or you see this Q, Q, W, E is left aligned. Maybe I want it to be right aligned or centered or whatever it might be, right? So you can play around with those. Excel also gives us the ability to put borders around things to make things look like a nice table, right? We can put borders in. Uh, I will show you how to do that. Um, we talked about uh, pasting and cutting. Um, auto formatting, uh, there's some auto formats that you can do, format as a table, will give you a nice table of data. And let's look at those two types of things. So we're gonna look at the formatting with the table and adding in uh, lines or borders. Okay, I'm gonna open up my sheet one here real quickly. And I'm just gonna put in a few things. So uh, this might be uh, height, oops, if I can spell correctly. And this is dollars, so I don't know, just making up something, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, and we will have, let's say it's $10 and $15 and $16 and $30, whatever, and $32. I can format this to make this look like a nice table. Before I do that, I'm gonna copy this. Control C, highlight it all, Control C, paste over here. I'm going to highlight all of this. And when I highlight it, uh, I, I moved it over there, but now I'm going to make it look like a nice table. So I can add in different borders if I want. So here's all the borders. Maybe I want a thick border around the whole outside. You can play with those types of things, right? Maybe I want this to be bold, right? Those are bold. And maybe um, these, I want to change my font type to 
to be, oh, I don't know. Let's just pick something here. different this is a different font um, I can also make this look a little better by adding some color if I want to it so maybe I want the heading to be a darker green and then a lighter green down below it right? so now it's more presentable for the boss the boss will be like wow it looks good although my dollars don't look like dollars do they well if I highlight that you'll see I have different formats that I can use I can use this general I can use currency right or I can just use a quick currency here English right there so there's my dollar sign right there oh these seem close let's move those over right so this looks a little nicer I can even center these so that table looks nice another way of laying this out real quickly is to highlight all this uh, we can go to uh, insert and table and we say okay and it picks and does it all for us and we can pick many different types there's orange there's black and white here's this blue that looks kind of nice so this makes an auto format but if i look at that there were also other formats that i could use right if i pull this down there's many different types that's kind of an ugly one but whatever you know whatever you might like there's a darker one and it will auto format this table for us that's another way of doing this The last thing I want to bring up is how to rename our tabs, right? Uh, because we'll be doing many different uh, assignments, homework assignments, there'll be different problems, and each problem should go on its own tab. So let's look at how we do that. Okay, so we're back to our spreadsheet. We see how this one called Sheet 1. If I right click on that, it says rename. I can rename that, and I can rename this as Problem 1. Right, so that was problem one. I'm going to rename sheet two as problem two. So now I've renamed them. I can even recolor them, right? I can color the tab uh, blue and I can color this one red. And so I have color coded my tabs. So that is something I will want you to do for your homework is to uh, color your tabs and name your tabs okay so that should be uh, enough for today uh, please practice this a little bit before class we will practice more in class and you'll get your homework assignment in class also which will deal with all just this basics of formatting the uh, excel spreadsheet i hope this was helpful for you uh, if you have questions from this, please come to class with questions. That's a great time to ask them. Uh, thanks for your time.